This issue of Sahar is an issue of great importance. It is something which we should not belittle. The Messenger وسلم, spoke of, of this, of Sahar, in, in, in many different ahadith. His companions narrated them to us so that would, this knowledge would be preserved and saved as a uh, protection for the whole of mankind to come afterwards. Um, the famous book of Kitab al Tawheed by Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab has a chapter on, on sorcery, on seha, in and of itself. A whole chapter. This shows you, again, its importance. And this also shows how prevalent this problem was in the time of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. So much that he, he designated a chapter in his book specifically to explain to the people what is haq and what is bathroom so they can abstain from what is falsehood and, uh, and, and, and remain upon the haq, the truth. So, some of the eyes in the Quran speak about this sahab of magic. The first one is, And indeed, they know the bias of it, magic, that they will have no share in the hereafter. This is a fundamental verse in, the, in, the, in Surah Al-Baqarah because it clearly shows that the sahir, the magician, that when he enters into the, de- into the arena of magic, sihr, when he starts dealing with the jinn or playing with the black magic, immediately it's crystal clear to him. He knows that he has sold his soul, his soul is hereafter, his soul is gender, for this limited pleasure or gain that he sees in the dunya. How do we know this? Allah said, وَلَقَدْ عَلِمُ Indeed, they knew very well, those who purchased this magic, that they would have no share in the hereafter. So they know this is kufr. They know this is kufr, they know this is kufr. But they still do it. Whether they've been misled, or whether they've been attacked themselves by the jinn to make them feel this way, whatever the reason being, they know. And Allah does not lie, He speaks the truth. In another ayah of the Quran, He says, that they believe in a jibit and ta'ud. The jibit is the, is the sihr. They believe in magic. They believe in black magic and they believe in a ta'ud, the false idols. <clears throat> Why is it they believe in the false idols? Why did Allah say about these magicians that they believe in the false idols? is because some of them are not Muslim, do not say they're Muslims anyway. They're Christians, or they're Jews, or they're fire worshippers, so they, so they believe in idols, idol worshipping. Those that are Muslims, they believe that Allah called them idol worshippers. Why? Because they disbelieve in Him, and they took the jinn as their gods besides Allah. Um, and then it also talks about the jibbat, that they believe, Allah cl- clarifies that they believe in this sorcery, in this magic. Also, in a very famous hadith, the Prophet said, Abstain from the seven major sins, the seven biggest sins. Mobikat is something enormous. The seven destroyers, the thing that will destroy you. And the first was Shin Billah. And the second was Sihr. So this came second in, in the order of the seven destructive, most destructive sins. And we know. That uh, the hadith narrated by the Jundub, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Hadu Sahir Barbatu Bissayf, Darbahu Bissayf." That the punishment for a magician is one strike with the sword. Now, one strike with the sword meaning taking off his head. This obviously only happens in the Islamic State. We don't. We have so many magicians here in, in England, in Luton, a lot. We don't go around chopping heads off. But what we learn from this, it shows you that this is such a criminal act, such an awesome act of, of, of magic that the Prophet Sallallahu has legislated to take off the person's head. We only do that with people who, you know, transgress, you know, we take off your head or kill other people. They take their heads off. Or they transgress in the earth, put, causing um, what's the highway robbery and, and, and killing people and stealing their wealth. We take the archers' arms and, le- and, and legs off at opposite ends. And the drugs and things like that, taking off their heads. So you can see how enormous, what a detrimental, what an enormous thing it is to be a magician. Now why is the Prophet said such hard punishment for them? And why Allah said that they disbelieve 
in Allah in the last day is because this jibbity, this magic, this black magic that they do involves communicate, communicating with the jinn. Another word involves communicating with the jinn which is haram, which is prohibited. And from amongst those jinn are believers and amongst them are disbelievers. They can, if, when they say that, oh, it's okay, I'm dealing with a Muslim jinn, never believe that. Because why? The jinn themselves are the same, have the same Quran as us. They are not allowed to interfere with the human's life either. So the believers from amongst them will never interfere with the, with, with, the, with the believers of this world. It's the disbelievers of that world fooling the magician, telling the magician, the sahib, that he is communicating with the Muslim when that person is actually a kafir. And also, there's another hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, he said that a sahib cannot be a sahib unless he disbelieves in Allah. So it's impossible for these people you see out here that give ta'wiz and do magic, it's impossible for them to carry out this action, to do the, any, uh, to do any sahab, until they disbelieve in Allah. And do you know how they, how they have to, how they are, what test they have to go through? What, what test the jinn put them through to, to make them disbelieve in Allah? Awful, disgusting, despicable things. Like making them stand on the Qur'an. Urinate and excrete on the Qur'an. And more than that, evil, disgusting things. And then when they do that, then they get the grade or the status of a magician, a, a sorcerer. But obviously they don't call them sorcerers. They call them, oh, you're high in our status, and now we'll give you two jinns or three jinns to work with. The more jinn the sahar has under his control, the more kufr he's done, and disbelief, and evil acts against Allah is in he's, he's committed. Now let's talk about those who go to these magicians, who go to them. Many of them are general Muslims. They don't know any better, very ignorant about, about their religion. They go there because why? It's been a cultural practice. Here in Luton, in the sense area, there was one beer that came from Pakistan. He's a sorcerer. And the brothers tell me, they were queues from outside his house right down the road and, and across the next road. Queues of people waiting there for his blessing, his, for him to spit on them or do something, or give them a ta'weez or do something. This person is a magician. He is a sorcerer. He is a disbeliever in Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet we had hundreds of people going there. It was talk of this town when he came. Everybody was talking about this person that came. And where are we from this ignorance, my brothers? We have to lift ignorance off of ourselves by learning the ahadith and the ayah of the Quran about this religion, how this is haram and impermissible. And once we've learned it ourselves, we don't keep it to ourselves. We have to go and tell your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, your cousins, your fur, everybody must know. It's no good taking this knowledge and keeping it in your heart, in your breast, yourself, and applying it to yourself. You have to tell the other people, otherwise you will not be able to stop such despicable, evil, kufr that, that is taking place in our own town. With good dawah, good preaching. I'm not saying go there and fight them. I'm saying with good dawah, good preaching and make them... When their head is a hadith, the first thing I'll say to you, you people of Wahhabi, you don't accept this. Open up a dialogue. No, good, good, good. Open up a dialogue. You say, well, Wahhabi, let's, let's discuss this. And then deal with them. And give them the dawah. And make them understand that this is kufr, this is not allowed. And we have others that have titles of beer. Your beer means teacher. Look how they twisted the words. A magician has become a teacher. A sorcerer has become a mufti. So do you think that masses of the, of the people will ever think there's anything bad in these people and what they're teaching? So be very careful, my brothers. Don't be fooled and mesmerized by names that people have given them. The asal is, this is kufr. The asal is, this is sahab. This is jinn, using jinn against uh, another, another jinn. It's haram. Giving a ta'weez. Okay, in the, is, is, is Quran. Some of them have Quran. As the Sheikh mentioned, there are some scholars who say this is permissible. We have no ishkal, no problem with that. If they write Quran, and they don't. Though we feel we, uh, both, we take the opinions wrong, that the, the, the hadith are disregarded by but some other scholars say sahih, no problem, let me continue. But what about the one who seeks refuge in a jinn, in the Dawis? There's no difference of opinion on this. This is kufr, this is shirk, and this, <coughs> and this is what we're referring to. This is what we're referring to. Pictures of a man with a noose around his neck. 
with some crazy words and du'as inside the da'wiz. We saw what the shaykh brought last time he came, all the da'wiz. So, the Prophet he said, that whoever visits a soothsayer and believes his words has denied in the revelation of Muhammad Sassam. Has denied what has been revealed upon the Prophet Sassam. Let's look at this. Whoever visits a soothsayer, a soothsayer, as we know in English, is one who will give you good news, good tidings. Oh, look in the in this board and look in there, give you and make you feel happy when you leave it. Yeah, like a crystal board, these sort of things. That's the way we've understood it here in England. A soothsayer at the time of the Prophet was not just the one who gives you good news, he's the one who gives you bad news as well. The one who tells you everything, the one who knows the future, who knows the unseen. This is kufr. The Prophet said, if I was to know the ghayb, the unseen, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa if I knew the unseen, no harm would have come to me. And I would have been the first to do all good. This is the ayah of the Quran. Allah said, say, O Muhammad, if I knew the unseen, then no harm would come to me and I would have done all good. So if the Prophet sallallahu didn't know the unseen, how could this sahib, magician, or peer or fakir, whatever you want to call him, how can they know the unseen? Also, so, so, so there are, as you see, these people, that, many of the Muslims that go to these magic, magicians, do we say about, about them that they disbelieve in Allah? No, we don't say that they disbelieve in Allah. They are ignorant. Allah said in the Quran, وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى لَبْعَذَ لَهُمْ رَسُولًا Now we're not going to punish them until we send them a messenger. A messenger or a message, a clear message. So we don't make a hukum on these people, they're kuffar. These are general people, awam, they don't understand. It's when they have the knowledge and then they disbelieve, then it's an issue of kufr and imam. And there's another hadith about the one who just visits a fortune teller and he asks him something and he believes in his words, he will not have his prayers accepted for 40 days. 40 days, his prayers will not be accepted. The Prophet he said, He is not from us. He who seeks omens, good omens, bad omens, you know, or practices fortune telling, or practices sorcery or magic, or has one, or has one do the magic for him or on him. One who goes to a kahir, a fortune teller, and believes what he has said, has disbelieved in what Muhammad has said. So, my brothers, this was a short, you know, uh, message. I'm sure most of you already knew these, but as a reminder to set the scene of this talk, that of this, this event, this seminar of the Sheikh, is to clearly show that you know, sehah is not a thing to play with. It's something we must avoid at all costs. It's something we must we must learn about so that we can abstain from it, and we can warn our families and friends from it. Jazakallah khair. So now I'll pass you to the Sheikh. So for the next 45 minutes, up to Asr, he will speak and talk to Charlie about the cures and, pre- and how to, uh, the preventive um, measures to take to protect ourselves from sahab, magic, jinn. I call it by Allah, I'm talking about this. It's for the Sheikh. Bismillah, in alhamdulillah, in ahmadu wa nusta'ini wa nusta'adih wa natuhu ilih wa na'udhu billahi min shurur nufusina wa min sayyat amalina. Man yadhi illahu fala mazilla la wa man yudhil fala hadiya la. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهادة نفوذ بها يوم لقاء اللهم صل وسلم وارض اللهم تكرم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد السلام عليكم my dear brother respected holders a gentle correction from my Abdul Qadir my brother Abdul Qadir I'm not Sheikh I'm just I wish I was but I'm Sheikh in age I'm 53 years old if if he meant by the age ما شاء الله I'm Sheikh but by the knowledge my brother, I'm not that. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me small knowledge regarding this rupiah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put me in this position. I've never thought. I was talking to my brother Abdul Samad when we were coming today. I said, I've never thought to do this job. You need to say, Raqi is mashallah. I've never thought to be. Um, in this position, but Hikmah alaykum salam, Hikmah Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me this uh, uh, position. 
inshallah, I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will do it accordingly, inshallah, correctly, according to Quran and the Sunnah. Um, last time when I came, I brought, you know, the evidence. You see, as a human, we want to see, you know, even anbiya, even nafs, the soul likes to see. قَالَ رَبِّ كَيْفَ تُحِيِّ الْمُوتَ قَالَ أَلُمْ تُؤْمِنْ قَالَ بَلَا وَلَكِنْ لِيَطْمَعِنَّ قَلْبِ So the Prophet Ibrahim Ibrahim a.s. He said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Show me how to bring dead people to life Ibrahim a.s. Nabi he has no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the dead to life is the one who bring he is the one who created us first of all so it's not hard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring somebody who is dead to life but in nafs Ibrahim alayhi salam he want he, to see so his nafs his soul inside to have mashallah and the sukun and tranquility so I thought last time, you know, I wanted to speak about uh, the evil eye and magic and especially the jinn. To bring the evidence for my brothers and sisters to see. And what uh, annoyed me, annoyed the brothers like me and the one who do ilaj by the Quran. When it comes to doctors, psychologists and the, the people who are in the medical field. What annoyed me more is when you find a Muslim doctor or Muslim psychologist who doesn't believe that the jinn composes. And there is clear evidence from the Quran, Al-Karim, Al-Ayah Al-Karim, يتخبط الشيطان من المس هذه الآية في سورة البقرة وكذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم and also the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said إنما يجري الشيطان مجرى الدم في العروق الشيطان run in our vein like the blood run in our vein and also the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when somebody or one of the Sahaba he came and he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, advise me. He said to him, La taghdab. And again he said to him, advise me. He said to him, La taghdab. Don't get upset, uh, don't get angry. O oh, yeah, oh, Prophet of Allah, advise me. He said to him, don't get upset. The second time he said, don't get upset. And third time he said, don't get upset. Why the Prophet said he said to him, don't get upset. Because when we get upset, our blood boil and we will be vulnerable to the shaitan to be in the church in our body and that's also when we get upset if you are standing sit if you are sitting lie down if you're still angry go and do wudu inshallah shaitan uh, the one who put the fire off on the water so so I thought I have to bring evidence for my brothers and sisters to see what what the jinn can do and the jinn doesn't enter the body unless there is a magic or there is a magician involved or we are upset, angry or there is hasid, evil eye evil eye can bring the jinn to the body the magical magician can bring the jinn to our body, going to the wrong places, the wrong time, that we put ourselves at risk that the jinn will enter our body. Last time I brought evidence that one sister, she was possessed. I heard some brothers, mashallah, 
may Allah reward them, they were complaining maybe the probably we shouldn't show the system. But alhamdulillah, if Allah today, inshallah, if Allah will give us a tawfiq, we are going to show a brother who had been possessed. He, he was possessed because of the evil Allah. Inshallah, if it works, inshallah, by the will of Allah, we will show you, inshallah, this. And uh, Brother Abdul Qadir was mentioned about the magician is not going to be a magician unless there is condition. He will bow to shaitan, he will give the legend to the shaitan, he will have a kufr, he doesn't believe in Allah wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the, the magician, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on one side and the shaitan on the other side. He will completely turn to the shaitan and he forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is many other things to, be, to drink the blood, to do sacrifice to the shaitan, to bow to the shaitan, to, to stay naked. Uh, many other filthy things sometimes you, you feel embarrassed to mention. And inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us inshallah to feel, the jinn will tell you in, in this inshallah uh, recording that the magician prostrate to me. We will see by the will of Allah Ta'ala. And Alhamdulillah, Brother Abdul Qadir, mashallah, he spoke, he made it clear. Now, um, I'm just going to, to speak to you, inshallah, about few experience. This is just after when I came the first time and I spoke. What happened after that? I had some brothers and sisters who came to visit me, and one of them, Abdul Qadir, inshallah, if you can just, inshallah, if you can read, inshallah, uh, this one, inshallah, and <coughs> maybe the same sister. And this is, inshallah, again, what the, the sister, how she was fooled by one magician and this magician pretend to be pretend to be like my uh, Abdul Qadir mentioned that um, he can cure her she was walking inshallah maybe we will call these sisters inshallah this sister inshallah and she will explain to you more inshallah in detail so this sister she was walking to the uh, uh, um, town center and she she was she felt not at ease and subhanallah shaitan will will you know shaitan and jinn sometimes they target the vulnerable people so this man he came and he said to all oh, do you have a problem most of us we have a problem maybe the poor lady because she's she's studying in university and she has maybe family problem uh, she couldn't probably memorize. She had a problem. So she said to him, yes. He said, oh, I can't help you. And then he gave her the phone number, whatever, and then she went to see this man. He took 1,400 1, pounds from her. The, the, the fee of the, the, the university. And uh, I wish, and he, when she gave that money, she would have uh, got something in return. But now, he put this stuff, you can see the, the, the hand, and love, the money, and so on and so forth. And there is other pages, and there is other pages, so this sister, when she goes to study, when she put her hand on the, on the book, this guy, he put this stuff inside her books. So she can not, basically what here is not, you know, Allah was sabda, whatever that means, balla sabda. Allah Sadda, Balla Sadda, Pichi, Mega, Lala. 
إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His Amr, if He said to something B, it will be Barakallahu Fiqh. Look at this, this guy, إِنَّمَا It is no He. سَيَاهُ Barakallahu Fiqh. كُنْ كُنْ فَيَا كُنْ كُنْ We were talking about Kaf and Qaf. In Arabic, if you said, uh, there is a Qaf with two points on top. If you take, for instance, if you want to say to somebody, Qul, that is Qaf and two dots. If you take just one dot, it will the meaning, the, the change, it will be full. Like an Egyptian uh, like full. Full, the uh, beans, beans. beans. Uh, beans. The, the white, the, the big one. So if you said also, Kul, Kafnam Kul, and you said Kul, just one, one uh, half, one letter, it changed. So this, this man is doing a big kufr by trying to, and that to be a magician, you have to break Quran, you have to read the Quran, the, uh, 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 like I showed you last time, So how? Because this one it hasn't got any meaning. Fa inna inna di inna dai. And when you change, يعني the the Quran, يعني معاني القرآن القرآن ما شاء الله with with Allah سبحانه وتعالى. All this is in her book. No. All this. It's quite a few pages, you know. So the Quran. That is the.
find out what was really that person had done to me and everything. Uh, I just want you to inform to everyone that make sure there are even people around. So make sure no one else could suffer to the same thing which I did. So I would like to ask everyone to pray for me and my family. And uh, I would like to inform that be careful from these evil people. And how about how about uh, how about the uh, the uh, the studying now? Can you can you touch your book? Can you read? Uh, just, and it's got all, uh, some, some names on the other side as well. 
but it's got your know, love and a phone number. This is something you find on toilet doors, you know? If you've got a toilet, you see someone's number. If you want to love, ring, ring this number. And this is where you put their thumbies. The name and the number and these things, sort of things. You can have a look at that now. If you can get into the... And, the, and this lady... Oh, you can see these sort of things. This is like a wall. Cover toilet wall, this is. And this lady, subhanAllah, she shake. Fear. Too much. So, and, and uh, he pushed her to, to write this, I know. And most of the writing, she doesn't know how she was. Obviously, there is a gene, about four or five gene, in the body of the sister. One of the gene to push her to commit zina. Okay? Alhamdulillah, my brother, inshallah. Here, mashallah, by the will of Allah, inshallah, most of us, inshallah, or inshallah, all of us, we don't have a gym. And you cannot feel you unless if you have that problem. If somebody tell you, my brother, I cannot sleep, I can't see the things, I've been lifted, I've been pushed, you hear, oh, yeah, but when you see it, or when you feel it yourself, then you understand what these people go through. Inshallah, later on, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have here, um, I have the privilege to bring the, the, the brother Abdul Samad. He's a pharmacist, and he works in hospital in the mental unit. He, inshallah, will speak, and you know, you don't find many people like this brother have the courage to speak. So he has experience with people who have been possessed, and sometimes when he pass you know, in front of the people who are possessed, because he's much of his uh, brothers, brother, practicing brother, so the, 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 these people who have a gene, they shake. And um, he will tell you about his experience, inshallah, after. After Sa'ad, inshallah. Um, Alhamdulillah, the best way, is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Qur'an al-Kareem. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an al-Kareem, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةً لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ The preventive measure, inshallah, is that, first of all, the person must be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مُحَافَظَ عَسَالًا To do the prayer, inshallah, on God meaning protection. Protection, the best way to protect yourself. The best way to protect yourself is to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to miss prayers. For the brothers, inshallah, try to do the prayers, inshallah, in the mosque. Because while you are going to mosque, inshallah, there is a reward. One step, inshallah, hasana, and the other step, take your sayyidah. And inshallah, you will, if you are possessed, the jinn doesn't like you to pray doesn't like you, if you manage to pray, doesn't like you to do five times a day. If you do five, five times a day, you be the jinn or shaitan, so the shaitan won't let you come to congregation. Because there is, there is qira'a, uh, mashallah, uh, there is too many brothers, you know, salam alaikum, wa alaikum salam, mashallah, tabarakallah, the jinn doesn't like that uh, uh, atmosphere. To be in wudu, inshallah, Alhamdulillah, nur ala nur. If you have, you are in wudu, inshallah, you are protected, inshallah. Um, reading, inshallah, ayat al-kursi before you go to sleep. Before you go to sleep, inshallah, be in wudu. Be in wudu, inshallah. Read uh, ayat al-kursi, al-fatiha, uh, ayat al-kursi, inshallah, surah al-ikhlas and wa'awidhatan. Rub on your body, inshallah. Sleep on the right hand side, inshallah. Azkur Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Read whatever you can, inshallah. The two last verse from Surah Al-Baqarah. Ij'al lisanaka ratub. Ratub bi dhikrillah. Make your you know, tongue, inshallah, uh, soft with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-qalb al-ghafi, the, 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 the heart which is in, in heedless, the shaitan can penetrate in it easy. But the, 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 the heart and the tongue which, you know, remembering Allah, shaitan 
will not have access to it. محافظة على الصلاة الصلاة في congregation إن شاء الله قيام الليل إن شاء الله shall I try at least at least once a week once a month يعني درب الصالحين the methodology of the صالحين is قيام الليل to stand up إن شاء الله and pray two ركعة four ركعة six ركعة eight ركعة as much as you can الله تبارك وتعالى he descend to سماء الدنيا and he call هل من منادي any anyone call me I am here to answer come on my brothers at least once a week once a month, whatever once a month at least you meet Allah there is no uh, intermediary Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, he descend to some dunya and هل من منادي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling us is there is anyone inshallah who need me alhamdulillah so qiyam al-lil uh, uh, Mondays and Thursdays, inshallah, the, uh, the fasting Mondays and Thursdays, this is the sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 13, 14, 15 of in, uh, uh, every month, inshallah, Muslim calendar. And uh, also, inshallah, there is for the brothers and sisters who are affected by, by the magic or by the jinn, there is the best remedy is after the Quran, inshallah, Zamzam water, Hajwa date. Um, at your date, there is sin and leaves. Mm. So, inshallah, this, uh, these herbs, inshallah, can, can help you by the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Continue later. On. Continue straight after us, brother. So, we refer back to the talk of the Shaykh when he was speaking about the Wakaya, the preventive barriers of Sahih. And yet, like I mentioned, my dear brothers and sisters, respected elders, that the best remedy, the, the best protection is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Quran. We reveal from the Quran what is cure and what is help for the believers. From the Quran, what is cure and mercy to the believers. You are not going to get that unless if you believe and you believe strongly that the Quran is a cure. No ta'wiz, no uh, this, no that. And like Abdul Qadir mentioned earlier, there is a difference of, of views of ta'wiz. I will leave this with um, my brother Abdul Qadir, inshallah. In the future, he will make a copy. There is two, two views. The one who is for and the one who is against. And, and... I'll make copies of this, inshallah. That's right. Inshallah. And why, you know, I personally, you know, clings to the group who are saying is, is, no, is not permissible. In the time of the Sahaba, Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu arda, he said to his wife, Forget about this Taweez or this uh, 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 amulets. Enough for you, the, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that time, in the time of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu mardan, and when it was safe, and he said to her, don't. How about now? You, saw, you heard the sister what she said, and this Taweez, and I, show, I did show you last time, is 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 time in bone this Taweez. You put something in your neck and you don't know. And most of the time, my brothers, it will bring Musiba more than to the cure. So Alhamdulillah, if anybody who knows uh Al Fatiha Ayat al Kursi, Al Ikhlas al Muawidat is enough. Al Fatiha from your heart, you read Al Fatiha and blue and water khalas. No. You know the Sheikh saying that the Fatiha and the Mawad Zain and that course is enough. But Shaykh, some brothers, they think that the jinn are so big and so powerful. How can such small du'as outwit their um, efforts to possess and cause harm? Good question. Yani, Allah wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعًا The successor, the one who does the prayer, and they have for sure. 
When you read Al-Fatiha and you have khushu' it will work. Somebody come, came to Imam and he said to him, I have a problem. He said, go and read Al-Fatiha. Umar radiallahu anhu wa arda, he used to read Fatiha, people get cured. This man, he went and he read Al-Fatiha. Then he came to his sheikh, he said, Ya sheikh, I read the Fatiha, but the problem is still there. He said to him, go and read the Fatiha. He read the Fatiha, I think three times. And he said to him, Ya Hada, or my son, whatever. Al Fatiha here, Fatiha. Lakin, lakin, aina qalba Umar. The Fatiha is Fatiha, but where is the heart of Umar? For you to work the Fatiha, you have to have the heart of Umar which means an Iman and Khushua. Huh? Somebody come to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Ya Rasulullah, my brother, he has a problem in his belly. He said, Asqihi Asal, give him honey. So this man, he went and he gave honey to his brother. Then he came one day, whatever, he, he said, Ya Rasulullah, my brother, he still have a problem. <coughs> then he said, go give him honey. The second time he gave him honey, the problem is still. The third time, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, go and give him honey. This time, the, this person, he gave plenty honey. So, mashallah, the third time it works. Because the quantity which he gave to his brother, it was low. And brother Abdul Samad is, is a pharmacist, he will tell us. You know, the quantity 350 gram, 400 gram, 100 gram, you know, this it has effect. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said to him, go and give him. That's why there is, you know, when you eat something, waiter, one, three, seven, like the Prophet ﷺ, he said, من تصبح بعجوة بسبعة تمرت عجو عجوة فلا يمسه سحر and he who takes seven ajwa date, inshallah he is going to be protected that day from magic or from any any poison. So why the Prophet ﷺ, he said seven, there is hikmah in the number seven. So inshallah, my brothers, when the Prophet ﷺ, he did the ruqya to the Sahaba in Maradwan, and sometimes he asked them to go and seek Rukia. He didn't tell them to do a Tawiz or to put something in your neck. And then Al Khulafa Rashidin Mahdiin, nobody, Umar, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uzman, Ali, Radiallahu Anhu Majmain, no one of them said put Tawiz, so on and so forth. And uh, let's see for, uh, for the <coughs> argument sake. At least if somebody give you Tawiz, see it at least. This man, he should write it with Zafran, Zafran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma ashfin te shafi. That is, there is here the ayat of Shifa, inshallah. I can read it on my brothers, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Tawbah, and God shall heal the breast of the believer. Surah Tawbah, Surah 9, verse 14. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned also in Surah Al-Nahl, uh, verse 69, and also in Najm, and also uh, Surah Al-Rahman, and so also Fusilat. You will find inshallah in the Quran, there is the cure in the Quran inshallah. So inshallah and also, uh, make habit for yourself to read inshallah to have weird of Quran every day one page two page three pages four inshallah every day read like that inshallah that it will protect you by the will of Allah I think our beloved mother Aisha radiallahu anha wa arda, she said ajaban surprising somebody who lived 60 years for 63 years, and he does more as a Quran. Very nice. When I hear this, 
At least if we don't memorize the Quran, is it not a shame? We cannot even read the Quran from, from the right page to the left in one year. 365 days, yani one year. If inshallah, we read every day one page, two page, Nakhtam al Quran. There is some people who can finish Quran in three days, like Uthman radiallahu anhu wa arda. There is somebody, most of the Sahaba, they read the Quran, Khatm al Quran, once every week. Yani, and there is yani, maximum, uh, minimum three days, maximum one month. If you read 20 minutes every day, you will finish. If you read the 20 page, 21 page every day, you will finish the Quran, inshallah. 20 page, 21 page a day, you will finish it, inshallah, with one month. 21 page, inshallah. You will, inshallah, finish the Quran. You know, when you look at the ayah verses, like a ajr. Comparing yourself when you look at TV or you look at the Quran, inshallah, you will have a reward even by looking at the verse, uh, 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 at the verses of the Quran. You read, you will have you know, other reward. You read and you struggle to read it, your, your reward multiply. الذي يتعتع في القرآن. The Prophet ﷺ said, the one who read and he read struggle, he will have more reward than somebody who read fluently. And when you read the Quran, inshallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the the jinn cannot approach. The brother was mentioned to me earlier when we were traveling. Somebody, he he visited the brother and he said to him, Wow, mashallah, I was with one group and some of them, whatever, they read, they, they read not Quran, uh, Allahu, Allahu, Allah. He said, you know, this Sufi, he said that the chest, their chest open and then there is a nur come out. I don't know, the laser guided things. It cannot be nur by just, by just saying, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, because of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't do that, Sahaba, they didn't do that. But if you wake up night, and you do Qiyamul Layl, Tahajjud, yes, Rahmat Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Or you read the Quran with Khushu'ah, yes, MashaAllah, Al Malaika will, will hear. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Wala tij'alu min buyutikum qubura. Don't make your house as graveyard. Read, inshaAllah, um, bring your family together, inshaAllah, open the Quran, read one page, two pages, inshaAllah. It's right, inshallah, um, translation, inshallah, so whole family benefit, and I don't think the jinn will have any chance to be inside. He cannot. So what about reciting um, Bakr in the house? Or, uh, and also, some people, they play CDs of Bakr. Is it permissible? Now, um, the Prophet, sallallahu he said, Al-Bayt al-Ladhi yuqra fi al-Qur'an, khasatan surat al-Baqarah, la yuqrabhu shaitan if Surah Al-Baqarah read in the house at least once in three days, shaitan cannot approach. If you cannot read, mashallah, you can put the CD, but you listen to it. Surah Al-Baqarah is not Ghostbusters. No, it doesn't chase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wants you to listen, and while you are doing the Quran, listen. By the Quran, first time wants you so, you know, uh, my sisters, inshallah, while you are cooking, inshallah, leave the city, inshallah, you will benefit. You are cooking, inshallah, you are listening, inshallah. You benefit from the reading and also that the shaitan cannot enter the house where there is ibadah. And not only Surah Al-Baqarah, Tasbih, Tahmeed, Tahleel. Um, try to buy the alarm, you know, with Adam five times a day. So the shaitan, he will find any angle, is going to be smug. Quran from here, Adam from here. My, our sister, inshallah, when she speak to her daughter, the son, Bismillah, Tawakal Allah. When you put the plate, Bismillah. When all this, inshallah, so the shaitan cannot, the jinn cannot penetrate, but you will have the jinn Muslim woman, inshallah. Because there is jinn Ammar, there is jinn who live in the house. This jinn Muslim 
most of the time they don't harm, especially they don't harm the people who are usually religious. What they do, while we are asleep, they come and eat. When they hear us, we are coming down, like we are coming for Fajr prayer, or we are coming, inshallah, they move up and they stay in the, our city. This is, inshallah, the Mu'min uh, Jinn. Uh, uh, okay? Inshallah, I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. And I hope, inshallah, I, I give you, inshallah, a, a brief, inshallah, how to protect yourself. And then, mashallah, um, my brother Abdul Samad, inshallah, is going to speak, inshallah. And uh, after Abdul Samad, inshallah, if we have a time, inshallah, there is an important, inshallah, uh, clip about the, the jinn, inshallah, is very, very intelligent, very smart. And he, the jinn, will speak how the, how the magician prostrate to them. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Raditu billahi rabban wa peace wa bil islami dinan wa bi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyya. It gives me great pleasure to be in this masjid. First visit to you imagine, mashallah, uh, beautiful brothers. Two things I noticed and the most beautiful and nothing before I continue is the sun, the moon, the stars, the sky are all beautiful signs of Allah and signs that everything worships Allah. But when I see a brother with a beard and his lower garment above his ankles, there is nothing better in this world than that. And mashallah, when you look around here, the vibrancy and inshallah the sakina will descend from Allah. Keep it up brothers, okay, because life is short and sisters too. Briefly about myself, um, my name is Abdus Samad, uh, parentage from Mauritius, born and raised in the UK, in North London. I currently live, and we say, Askun, comes from the word Sakina in Ilford, alhamdulillah, a nice little, little Islamic uh, area too. And I work at, at my profession as a pharmacist. I work at the moment, the last four years, four years in mental health services, which means I visit wards, hospital wards, where people who are mentally unwell come and stay in the wards. If you go to a normal hospital, if you have a broken leg, or you have a heart problem, you go to the hospital and you get better and you come home. In the wards I work, you're only admitted to a mental health unit. It's very important you understand this. You will only be admitted to a mental health unit and the wards are locked, so you can't get out. Okay? And you will only be admitted if you are a danger to yourself, number one, or number two, if you are a danger to other people. If they can diagnose mental health illness in you, then they will put you in the ward, lock the doors, and you will be in there until you get better, inshallah. Sounds quite intimidating, because all the people that you walk around are all unwell. From the scientific point of view, they will say these people, they have some mental disturbances, some problem with mental mentality. So we have different conditions. Some people have anxiety, some people have schizophrenia, some people have something called bipolar disorder, some people have depression. Bipolar disorder is a fluctuation between a really high mood and a really low mood. And then there's other problems like uh, children have attention deficiency and so on and so on. In these units, when I visit them, okay, and my interest was to get involved in this, and, and there's no pleasure in it, because you see hard cases, okay, and uh, you see people with very, very big <coughs> problems. But ultimately, when you look at it from, a, from an Islamic point, and when I walk around, there's, there's no mistaking what my point of view is going to be, alhamdulillah. Um, you find that you have many, many factors, patients, nurses, psychiatrists, doctors, everyone has an opinion on how to treat people. So when you ask the psychiatrist, how, how do you treat mental health illnesses? To this point, to this day, no drug can cure mental health illness. By 2020, right now, depression is the fifth biggest disease in the world. By 2020, 
is going to be number one. And there are two factors because of that. One is because cancer and heart disease has been treated better. And number two is depression has been left in the gutter. Okay? Now, when someone is depressed, anyone know what happens at the end of depression? If someone is really depressed, what happens to the person? What do they try to do? Suicide. Okay. When someone is very anxious, what would that, at the end of the anxiety, what would they try to do? To what, what, they, what will they try to do to themselves? Self-harm. Self-harm, yeah. And the same with schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a disease, a mental disorder where you hear voices, you see things, you hear things, you te- your, your, your five senses begin to see things that are not there. Now in Islam we say we don't see things that are there. But the people who are unwell, they claim to see things, they claim to, to, to experience things. And at the end of the condition as well, one in ten schizophrenics will try to take their lives. Okay? Uh, Abu Muhammad, when he teaches, maybe in the previous seminar, is that the jinn, I'll we'll come to the jinn and how, how, how they work, they will make waswasa, make waswasa, make waswasa in your ear until the point... They cannot make you take your life, but they will make you try to take your life. And a very clear point we need to understand is committing suicide, committing suicide doesn't mean you will succeed. Okay? Because only Allah is the one that is going to take your life. When He is ready to take your life, whether you do any action or do no action at all, whether you run towards death or you hide from it, it will come to you. But the act of committing suicide is kufr, and the shaitan will tempt you and tempt you and tempt you to do that action. Also, <coughs> I came to Ilford, I went to, uh, for my travels, I ended up in Ilford at the beginning of 2010, <coughs> and stumbled, and Masjid Ansar and, and things, stumbled across Abu Muhammad's DVD, and I was doing my work uh, in the hospital, single-handed, and I said, it's about time we try to, we try to incorporate uh, Rukia services in the NHS. Right? Mm, a few smiles there, a few curious smiles I can see here. So yeah, exactly the same response. Um, so I came to say Abu Muhammad and we had a long discussion and he was like, no chance. And I was like, no, 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 there is a chance. Inshallah, there, there, is, there is a way. There is a way, inshallah, there will be a way. And uh, we started to work with certain patients that I would identify and we would send them to Abu Muhammad or Rukia. Not when they were acutely unwell because they wouldn't allow a non-family patient confidentiality onto the wards. So we couldn't do it that way. So patients got a certain amount of stability, and then slowly we started sending one or two patients through the chaplaincy uh, to Abu Muhammad for Rukia. Ultimately, why do you think that is? Why do you think well, that the NHS would be interested in, in Rukia? Save money. Huh? Save, save, save money. money, right? It's all about, someone told me, uh, a, an a religious person told me that your God is not the God of this world anymore, money is the God of this world. So that's the reason why they want to do it, it saves them money. How much does it cost to keep someone in hospital, in any hospital per night? Anyone know? Grand? 675 pounds. That's how much it is a night. So it's more expensive than the Dorchester, apparently. Right? In, 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 in Swanky, London, Swanky, West London. So that's how much it costs. So every time you keep someone out of hospital for one day, that's how much you save the NHS. Okay, so we came to to see Muhammad and the, the Rukia service and some of the psychiatrists there are some psychiatrists who believe that this is, this is the way forward and some psychiatrists say this is just a load of you know what and the, the, traditionally whether you go to any medic in the world and if there are any uh, medics here or anyone who, 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 got, who works in the, the medical profession it says that medics are generally, generally less religious than their patients so when you go to anyone, okay, remember to take your iman with you, because they will offer you other clues, and then you might, within it, how long does it take to lose your iman? How long does it take to build it? How long does it take to lose it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you have to be very, very precautious, whether whatever kind of medical decision you decide to make. Um, so the work continued uh, slowly, and some psychiatrists were angry, some psychiatrists were quite proactive, sending, uh, trying to get involved in it. And it's developed, I'll just go to, before I go to some experiences that I've, so I'm sure you probably think, I don't think, don't want to bore you with medicine and how it works because you can always look it up on whatever website you want to or you can call me afterwards. But what happened, what this became, what became of this is that the NHS where I work, they said, well, do you have any proof that this works? Right? 
prove rugby all works. Anyone here? Come on, stand up and prove that rugby all works. Go on, Muhammad, and prove it works. It works. Huh? It works. No. Yeah? I'm a Tabilla. Yeah? I believe in Allah and everything that he says is the truth. Well, they come and see, Shall I get on? Okay. No. But they come and see. You see this. Uh, we'll see a few videos. If I be skeptical, oh, someone's faking it. Blah, 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 blah. You have this. Okay? You have to be accepted. This is the real world. So how do you prove it works? So in... Take a patient and recite the Quran. Over. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a very good way of showing it. And I had some interesting experiences with that. But we'll come to that. But the way that they like to do things in the, is to have scientific research. Mm. So we there's a, there's a, there is a psychiatric rating scale. So someone is unwell. Okay. They scale. They come to the hospital. There's a survey. It says certain symptoms, certain symptoms, and they're scored. Okay. They're scored, and then here's the medication. Here's some counselling, and here's some stuff. And a week later, you're scored again. And then, what should happen to the score? Go down. Don't. This should be shown improvement. So what we've done, we've how many patients are we up to? About 65, 70. We're about 65, 70, using the same scale. Okay, patients come to see Abu Muhammad, so we ask them to fill the psychiatric rating scale in before they have Rukia. And then, after they have Rukia. Fill the scale in again. But what should happen? Inshallah. So when you should, we haven't we haven't published the results, but um, anyone who has rookie or comes from Muhammad will encourage them to fill the form in and show sorry, did you want to? And, and if you allow me, inshallah, there is inshallah my brother, there is a doctor there, inshallah. He came all the way from Australia. Doctor with his wife, both of them doctor, they came all the way from Australia for us to do Rukia. And inshallah, by the will of Allah, is it is it working, inshallah? Mashallah, you will hear what the doctor he will say is there or inshallah he also we can call him inshallah and he will speak both of them possessed this uh, story which I told you earlier the story of this doctor and his wife unbelievable but because he's Muslim he said to me I, I do believe the jinn possessed I believe I believe the jinn but I don't believe the jinn can do this. But by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he saw his wife, she had five jinn. And the jinn was blocking them to have, to have children. Inshallah, if we have a time, inshallah, you will hear and that the brother will explain. He, he, so he had a female jinn in her, in his body. And his wife, she had five. So inshallah, we leave. Inshallah, to hear it from from him. Inshallah, when Abdul Samad, Inshallah, when he finish, Inshallah, Inshallah. Okay, uh, Inshallah. Um, that's that's that, 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 that's the research that's gone on. We've I've written to a few scientific papers in psychiatry, and they're very interested in publishing the results of this uh, this survey. Whatever else you hear, you take the authentic story from this brother who's sitting on my right hand side here. Anything else can be twisted and turned. For us or against us. But anything that comes from his lips or bi'idhnillah my lips is what you take from the research, inshallah. I would like to share my experiences. Abu Muhammad says, bring your experiences and share them. Um, I seek refuge from Allah from being proud or being or any kind of negativity that can come from this. And I ask you to pray for me Amen. if these kind of thoughts enter my head for whatever reason. Okay? Where I work is full of jinn. People who get depressed come, they see things, they hear things, they say voices are talking to them. They're self-harming. They're trying to take their life. They're trying to hit you. They're trying to aggress. You walk around, you have to wear a panic bag when you walk around, when you walk the wards. So as soon as the patient becomes aggressive, um, they, they, uh, they, they, sort of, they, they you pull the button and you don't get anything. For 18 months, I didn't wear one. I, I, I believed in a certain different way of how to protect myself. Uh, until I was given a recent official warning saying if you don't wear whether you pull it or not is your problem, but if you don't wear one, you're gonna you're not gonna be you're not gonna be employed by the trust, which is fair. To protect yourself is for the Quran and the Sunnah. I will go through a few examples of what I see on the ward, and if you want to add or share anything or ask any questions, then we do. In the summer, hot or cold. Hot. Hot. Uh, where, if you were to sleep in the summer, where would you sleep? 
in the shade, or you could sleep in the sun if you're like mentally unwell. Some people, say. what they choose to do, like the shaitan does, they sleep between the sun and the shade, and every time the sun creeps, they roll across. Every time the sun creeps, and they roll across. So you ask them, why are you sleep like that? And then they say, I'm comfortable like this, I like sleeping like this. And what you'll find is they sleep on their bellies. Okay? You see them sleep on their and you can't film it because they're locked forward and they're special confidentiality. Um, but this is what you see. So you, you find that this is, this is one experience. Another experience is when the patients are admitted to the ward, they have to be med medically cleared. Okay? And I always look for one thing. When they medically clear somebody, when they knock your body, you knock your own body, it's hollow. Yeah? When the chin enters the body, what happens? It becomes full. Yeah? So you look at the patient, the doctor's notes, and they will say body palpable, which means soft or hard. It will say hard. So when it says hard, what do you indicate? That is general magic. See, there is general magic. So after then, I will go and speak to the patient. And many things can happen after then. So, first patient, I'll tell you one which has recently happened. A patient called John. No, sorry, his name's Michael. Uh, and he is very, very unwell, schizophrenic, paranoid, had problems with whatever abuse, police forensic problem. In, 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 in psychiatry, we don't say police problem, we say forensic problem. You're not allowed to say for, for police. Uh, so he, he, on the ward, every time I go up to him, uh, he says, I don't like you, stay away from me. You make me, you make me unhappy. Get away from me. Uh, in after Ramadan, I got back here. I was wearing cufflink, a cufflink on, the, on the sleeves, and one dropped, one dropped on the wall. And I was at home and I was like, I've dropped my cuff, I dropped my cufflink. I'm quite maybe OCD about it because of these problems. You're quite OCD about what, where you what, where you put things and what you do. I've dropped my cufflink, uh, and then she said, well, you might have dropped it on the road and stuff. Go back the next day, and Michael says to me, he says these, well, he says, tomorrow, John, and he gave his surname, will come and visit you tomorrow. And I said, why? He says, I've got this. And he showed me my cufflink. So he did. So, I, what can you do? What, do you, what would you do? No. Huh? You get scared now, right? A bit worried. Huh? Huh? So, continue your ibadah, continue your fasting, continue your prayer. And... I went back to that ward after seven days. Seven days later, I went back to that ward. And he came and saw me, uh, Michael. And he said, you know, I told you John was coming to see you. I said, yeah. As he came he said, and he couldn't enter your house. But he told me now that his name's Muhammad. And he's left me. I said, he didn't see. Okay? But this is, this is, this is how you can protect yourself. He embraced Islam. He embraced, he embraced Islam. This jinn who was here to attack, okay, he was sent to attack. But if you practice your faith, <coughs> and your faith is a gift from Allah, right, and you protect it, and you practice it, and you make you make your istighfar to Allah, inshallah, nothing can, nothing can harm you, unless Allah wills it. Another, another interesting one, there's a Russian, a Russian boy, a Russian boy who can speak English, came to the ward, and not, nothing to do with Islam. So I went to see him, and he's blind. This boy's blind. And he was admitted because he, it was, he said the voice told him to cut himself across the belly and remove a devil from inside his belly. So he did it. He cut himself, and, he's, and he was admitted to a general ward, and then he came to us. So I spoke, uh, through a translator, we spoke to him, and we, find, I asked, we asked him, why is he blind? Why do you think he was blind? Who was blind? The boy was blind? The boy, yes. Well, this Russian boy was blind. The boy was blind. Mm -hmm. It's good, good, one, one, good one. What actually happened is that previous to this admission, he was seeing people created a fire. This is what he says in his notes. They were created a fire, the people coming towards him and telling him to, to, to harm himself. So what did he do? He took two forks, pulled his, put them in his eyes and pulled his eyes out. So you can see it. This is what the jinn can tempt you to do, right? They can't make you do anything, but they can suggest it to you. This is what happened to him. 
Another one, I was in a, in a ward round with doctors. I, I would sit like this, patient comes in and their family, and they sit round together. Non-Muslim again, okay? Non-Muslim. In most cases, these are non-Muslim people. The people of, of faith choose not to share their, uh, their stories if possible. Yeah. Because Muhammad, Muhammad is here and we see these, we experience them here. But um, a woman was sitting down and she has this problem. She says that everywhere she goes, she has silver ants. She sees these silver ants and they walk everywhere and they go on everybody. So I was sitting in the wall round and she said, and she started crying again, and crying, and I goes, the, the ants are here, and they're pouring everywhere. And she looked at me and goes, but they don't come to you, they don't like you. They can't come on you. So I said, why don't they come on you? And he goes, you pray your, your, your morning prayer in the morning. She has nothing, to, no understanding of Islam. I don't know. She said, you prayed in the morning. You prayed Fajr. In the masjid. Fajr he who done thus, the, the Prophet said, Man salla al fajr fi jama'a fa huwa fi aman, wa man salla al isha fi jama'a fa huwa fi aman. So, inshallah. Um, so, these kind of things happen. But the best story is a story. The best story for me, uh, in my experience, is when, before Ramadan, mm-hmm. before Ramadan, a magician was admitted to the ward. Someone who does magic, a magician, was admitted. Admitted to the ward. Doors locked. Cannot get out of this ward. So I, he was admitted on us. I was. I, I, I work uh, Monday to Friday. I work Monday to Friday, and he was admitted on a Saturday. Saturday and Sunday, he apparently, um, he's calling out to the. I want to get out. I need to get out of here. I need. I'm not unwell. I need to get out. And. He says, I need to sacrifice, so he was saying, I need to, he needed, actually, I need, to, I need to sacrifice my blood and the blood of a chicken together, and I'll be better. That's what he was saying, to them, constantly saying this. So I got there on Monday, and I said, what is your role? And he said, he is, not Peer, what was the other one you said? Peer. Fakir. Fakir, yeah, he said he's Fakir. Right, so, inkling of the Afida, or religious affiliation, right? So, he said, to, <coughs> He said that I need to I need to do this, I need to I need to leave the ward. I said, Why, what happens if you leave, what happens if you sacrifice the blood? And he goes, then this he says he says on his tongue, but this jinn that is troubling me will leave me and go where he where, where he's supposed to go. So this jinn, this magician, and sometimes what you find is magic goes wrong. Skilled magicians are very rare. Yeah. Is that true? Yes. Skilled magicians, they do the magic correctly. Very rare, because when it goes wrong, it can destroy everything around it. And like Abu Muhammad always taught, I mean, he says a magician is like fire, and he eats everything around it until there's nothing else to eat, and it will end up eating itself. That's what magic is about. So this magician is still on the board till we speak today, getting increasingly unwell. The jinn is torturing him. Okay, and he asked me to make up here. He asked me to make Rukiyam. I said, he needs to, you need to repent to Allah first. Because he is, like you said, drowned in Kufr. Right? Move, move every step towards Kufr. And like the brother, the brother said, you move away from Allah. And this is where this person is. And the only way for to get him out of the ward is to do Rukiyam. Anyway, um, any questions about hospitals and, and whatever? Quickly, in case you need to go to the hospital after a question, yeah? Uh, is it advisable to give ruqya on people who are, uh, you know, kufar? Or do they need to believe first in order for someone else to do ruqya and for, for it to work? In the, in, in, in the, in the inpatient environment in the hospitals, when someone, is, when someone needs restraining, who's a small brother here? That little, that little brother here. How many people would you need to hold him down right now? If, 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 if he was troubling us right now, how many people, how many, how many of us brothers could hold, could hold him down now? Just one. One, yeah. In the, in the in, inpatient environment, there's a child in adolescent unit. Boy like this, Four. Four. 17 nurses to hold one person like this down. 17, and ner- nurses are trained in, uh, have to receive training for controlling restraints, okay? It's a specific technique. It's not like us, we just jump on him and like, like you know, like, 
to see what if we can grab the hold of him. There's a specific technique to hold the person down. You don't harm yourself and you don't harm the person. But he took 17 in front of my eyes to hold a boy, maybe 15. How old are you? Rough. How old are you? Oh, 17, so about that age. And uh, that's how much power Jin can, 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 um, can show. And normally what you find in the hospitals as well is that Jin, they tend to show off. If they're on their own and they're reclusive and there's no one around them, they tend not to sort of, uh, not to manifest. But when you give them a gathering, a mehfil, or like you say, the people have a mehfil, and they want to show their power, that's when you'll see them manifest their sickness. And that's all it is. Just to answer your question, but yeah. does uh, the person have to be a Muslim to do ruqya on it, or can you do Muslims or non-Muslims? Ruqya or non-Muslims? You can't do, inshallah. Um, don't forget, Raqi is dead. You know, when I do it for a non-Muslim, you need to show this person you need the, the power of the Quran. And there is, inshallah, by, uh, by chance, there is one non-Muslim who came with his friend. And he saw his friend. I was doing Rukya on his friend. Then he was, he was shaky. And I thought he was Muslim. And I said to him, my brother, how did you feel? And the other brother, he said, oh, sorry, Muhammad, he's not Muslim. I said, well, oh, okay. And then I said to him, do you mind me and he, uh, to ask you and to feel me? He said, I don't mind. I said to him, how did you feel? And he said, you know, I felt, I felt short or I felt I want to run from this room. But the good thing, which he said, he, he wakes me up, he opened my eyes. So you will, you will hear, inshallah, the, 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 this, this guy. Inshallah, may, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him guidance. And I did rupiah for Hindu lady, and she's willing to share her experience. She, she's willing to speak. And this lady, she's Hindu, but she puts Surah al-Baqarah every day. Now she puts Surah al-Baqarah in her house. And... When you ask her, she will tell you, I will have tranquility and sukun when I listen to her. <coughs> so my intention as, as Raqi to do ruqya for them, and then when they get better, we say to them, look, if you don't want to embrace Islam, at <coughs> least this is the cure. At least if they are not with you, you will... You, you will uh, at least uh, neutralize them, they will not be against you. I did Rukia for a sick, uh, 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 sick person, is, uh, and he used to, he, his work is local uh, chemist. He was possessed by the jinn through the evil eye. When you move to him like this, you get approached to him, he push you. He, do, he, he, he feel uh, he cannot breathe. Uh, no. So he pushed me. I was reading, inshallah, by the will of Allah Ta'ala. After 10 minutes, I started moving my face closer to his face to see his reaction. And he was smiling and I keep, uh, you know, get close, close. Alhamdulillah, I get my face to his face. That's all gone by the will. Then I called my son, he worked with him, and I said to him, Muhammad, come and see I come I said to him, come, come, see your friend. And he was sitting and I told him, get closer to him. My son, he knows him, he was, you know, he was this now. And I said to him, do it. And he gets close to him, close to him, he was surprised. And I find the jinn. The jinn enter his body through his family because they are jealous of him. And he used to work like three days a week, whatever, but mashallah, he has money. He said, I work three days, but I have plenty of money. So even a non Muslim, and they have, you know, the hatred and jealousy. So the jinn spoke that I enter the body through one of his family. Well, sorry, this is a hadith, it's a Bukhari, where the Prophet's companions went to. Far place, and they saw the king uh, who was not Muslim, 
And then he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, you used to be the most hated person to me or to my heart. But now you are most beloved person to me. You know, that's why the wisdom and hikmah, you know, in the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, huwa al-hadi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives guidance. And the, the method of da'wah, mashallah, you, know, you never get Nuh, 950 years. Uh, he called people to Islam, they reject. It, they went to extreme where they, they put their fingers in their ears. And he was giving da'wah, giving da'wah, and he didn't give, he didn't give up. Might be 12 people following. Very, very uh, 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 small number. So the brother, your question. What's the point? Don't burn it. Up. Is, is, is it photocopy? Because it's yeah, photocopy. It's photocopy. I think if you get it there, inshallah, like this one, when you see, when you see Tawiz, try not to touch it with your hand. Sometimes it's, it's, ma it's magic, it's not Tawiz. Because there is, there is difference between Tawiz and Jadu. Tawiz is supposed to be to protect you. Like this one is supposed to be Tawiz, but actually is more magic than Tawiz. So there is some magic is made by fire. If you put it in a fire, you might harm yourself. The best thing in China to do is to take a bowl of water, read the Fatiha, Ayat al Kursi, or just Fatiha, and three words blow inside the, the water and dip it inside, inshallah, until when the, you know, the ink dissolves. Then, inshallah, if you want to burn it or, or whatever, inshallah, dissolve it, inshallah, destroy it, inshallah. Uh, the point, anyway, is, is that uh, I want to say one thing. The brother reminded me about a uh, chapter in the book that she read, which is really, you know, very, very, very important. Where there was an area once which was inhabited by a lot of jinn, causing a lot of seh and magic to the people and causing a lot of uh, corruption in that area. What happened was, Iraqi moved there. Al Sheikh, Al Ali, Al Sheikh, he moved there. And when he moved there, he refused to read on anybody. All he done was taught Tawheed, the oneness of Allah to the people. And after some time, the whole area became clean with no problems with jinn and magic, sand, sorcery, etc, etc, etc. All from what? From learning about Tawheed. Because when you learn about Tawheed, it has a number of benefits. First is it increases your tawakkal, your reliance in Allah. And you realize how powerful Allah and He is almighty and powerful, able to protect you from all harms and all ill and all difficulties and all hardship. You know, secondly, that the risk, the sustenance that you get is only from Allah. So He teaches you this. So He teaches you that if you protect Allah's boundaries, pray five times a day, fast in Ramadan, you don't involve in haram and sin, you, you know, stay away from riba, etc., then Allah will protect you. And who is a better protection for you than Allah Jalla Ala? Fourthly, that Tawheed it makes you realize how insignificant the sorcerer is, that magic is, that the effect that it, that it has on other people, how really insignificant it is. So he taught the people Tawheed, and when the people became firm upon Tawheed, and connected with Allah, they had no problems. So we are suffering in this area, Luton, I believe clearly, because the knowledge of Tawheed has not spread to the people. So this is a responsibility on our shoulders, those who claim to know Tawheed, who claim to have this ilma, this knowledge, to spread this Dawah of Tawheed to the people, and then you will find the jinn will flee, they'll find somewhere else where they can trouble people. So that's why we want to, inshallah, we'll end on that note, inshallah. We ask Allah Jalla wa Allah to accept our efforts and uh, forgive us for our sins and give us you know, a desire to seek knowledge.